Hi, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to talk about South Africa, New Zealand, or New Zealand, South Africa, in South Africa, uh, come up in March. So, I've been a little bit of a break from Test Cricket, but we're back into it. Um, we'll get to some results recently uh, later on. Um, but we'll talk about um, the New Zealanders first. Um, and uh, had a pretty good result in Australia. I mean, a very good result, really. As I mentioned, they hadn't won overseas against meaningful opposition in nine years. So, um, beating Australia in a very close, very exciting test match by um, eight runs, I think it was. Uh, it was a very good result. Um, seven runs, pardon me. Um, and they now come back for their, their home summer against South Africa, play three tests. Um, New Zealand are a pretty young team, particularly in their bowling stocks. Um, Doug Bracewell was the man of the match in that test win against Australia. Um, and he will be a, a relatively important role. Their bowlers, in general, will be important. Um, so, uh, sorry, New Zealand's real hope here is to um, skittle South Africa uh, for, for very little runs. That's what they did against Australia. They bowled Australia out in that test match for 136 and 233 to win. Um, it's really the only way they can win test matches. They're not a batting card that's going to be able to put a huge amount of runs on. Um, Kane Williamson, their, their big young hope is still developing, obviously. Um, and uh, I mean, at the moment, Kane Williamson... Um, very young kid, 21, um, averaging 30, 81 at internationals and 42 at first class level. I'm very excited about him. Their future number three, but um, had a poor series against Australia, and um, and w won't get much easier against Stein and Cole. We'll talk about South Africa's bowling in a second. Um, Ross Taylor, Jesse Ryder, um, and da yeah, Daniel Vittori, In all honesty, at number six, will be an important important role to get New Zealand to respectability. But there's obviously no. No big scores lurking there. If, if New Zealand hit 400 in any of these innings, it would be a pretty, pretty staggering result. Um, so they're relying on the bowling. Chris Martin, Doug Bracewell, um, then like Southie, Franklin, Trent Bolt, one of these guys, along with Vittori. There might be uh, Franklin in particular seems like he'd be a good addition to this team to offer some batting depth. Um, and yes, it'll be handy to have him bowling. But Vittori, they're playing really as a legitimate all-rounder. That's understandable. He's averaged over 40 for the last five years. At number six, and in that card, that's a really good average. Um, so that's how they'll be approaching. I mean, New Zealand haven't really been that good a home team. I mean, I mentioned the problems with them on the road, um, and that, that nine-year drought. But even even at home, they have not been that good since 2008 against teams that are not Zimbabwe or Bangladesh at home. They've only won two matches. They've lost eight, and they've drawn five. Um, so unlike the West Indies, who are usually um, you know, sort of a league average team at home or a test average team at home. New Zealand is pretty much as bad everywhere. They're, they're, they tend to get a bit of a free ride. People talk about West Indies being terrible and so on. I don't really talk about New Zealand as much, but New Zealand are um, um, significantly worse. Um, and unless they can bowl uh, South Africa out for low totals, they're not going to be really in this series. The key wicket there, obviously, is Graham Smith. If they want to roll South Africa, just like rolling any team, the key is to get that first wicket early. Um, expose three, four to the new ball, and then hopefully you can one brings two, and so you get them two for ten, and then that's how your collapses happen. Um, Graham Smith um, has not been batting very well recently, and has not had a great record against New Zealand. He averages 39.23 against the New Zealanders, century rate of 14. Um, however, in New Zealand, it's only the one series. We had a very successful series back in 2004. This is the only time playing there. Average 58, scored in a third of his innings with a century in the six innings that he played. Um, take of those numbers what you will. There's nothing particularly threatening there for Smith, um, although he hasn't played well this year. Smith, uh, on the last, sorry, last year and a half. So you, South Africa, both these teams actually haven't played a lot of test matches of late. Um, Smith is averaging 37.56 in the six tests, so only six tests since the start of 2011. Um, only scoring 18.2% of his innings and with one century in 11 innings. So, again, very small sample size. The numbers aren't horrible. Um, so I wouldn't think that there's much reason to be too worried about Graham Smith's wicket uh, if you're a South African fan. Um, down the other end, Alvaro Peterson or Jacques Rudolph or whoever is the other opener of the moment for South Africa, that might be more of a realistic target. But unless you get Graham Smith, it's very hard to wipe South Africa out for less than 200. And that's what New Zealand have to do to win. South Africa, um, well, look, they should win the series, obviously. Um, their bowling attack is very, very good. They um, uncovered Mashad Belanga against Sri Lanka. That was a very disappointing performance for them, obviously, um, losing that second test by 208 runs. They lost that test with their batting card. They bowled fine. Um, if we look at the, the bowling performance, they bowled Sri Lanka out for 338 and 279. 
That's not brilliant, but it's not terrible. Held them to 600 runs. South Africa should win that match. Um, but they were undone. And they were undone particularly by slow bowling. Herat took nine wickets. Uh, clearly, he's Sri Lanka's best bowler, but arguably you could say the same is true for Vittori. Um, uh, for New Zealand. vittori has got a terrible record against South Africa. He's got had 11 matches. He's only taken 18 wickets in 11 matches at 69.66. Vittori's career is not impressive from a bowling standpoint, um, but 69.66 in a large sample size, 11 test matches. Um, nothing to fear there, and is it the only real, um, the only slow bowling threat probably at all, probably literally at all, from New Zealand. So I don't think they're going to be undone by slow bowling. Um, an area where they've improved a lot in the last you know, seven or eight years. But um, Herat did undo them, but there's no one there to do that for New Zealand. Um, pace bowling, there's no one there. I say Bracewell will see, but it's very early days, and I'm not super impressed. He's going to untie these, this, this the South African batting card. Bowling stocks look amazing. Dale Stein in New Zealand. It's like Homer in the land of chocolate. Um, the ball's going to move around a lot, as it does in New Zealand. Dale Stein is by far the best fast bowler in the world, particularly the best swing bowler. Um, I could see him going off for you know 28 wickets or something crazy in this series. Um, speaking of their fast bowling stocks, Mornay Morkel's under some pressure. Talked about Marshall Delanger, who had a very good um, second test against, uh, sorry, third test against Sri Lanka. Took seven or eight wickets in, in an inning, seven wickets, I think. Um, and they're very deep in the bowling stocks, as they normally are. Um, Philander is, is pretty much a walk-up start. Been great. I actually didn't do the numbers on him, but we know he's been great. But we'll look at that next time South Africa plays, which is England in the winter. Um, but yeah, Philander's a, a walk-up start. Dale Stein, obviously. And Morkel is now possibly being challenged by Delanger. Um, Morkel has not been good for a while. Um, he's always been sort of steady in that sort of compliment to Stein. He's averaged 34.79 since the start of 2011. Still getting wickets, 3.2 wickets a match, which isn't too bad. The average is too high, though. Um, especially for a guy that normally is an econ kind of focused bowler, who you know normally can bowl to fields and ties batsmen up. Um, so he's in need of a big series, and there's no easier stage to do it. If he can't perform here, South Africa should put Marshall Delanger on the plane to England because... Um, uh, to start, because, you know, this is not a good batting card. It's in excellent fast bowling conditions. Um, he's supposed to be a good bowler. He needs a big series. South Africa really need to put their foot down here. That was a very bad performance against Sri Lanka. Not a good performance against Australia. Two series they should have won easily. They lost two out of five tests. It wasn't good enough. It's very symptomatic of how South Africa have been over a prolonged period of time. Disappointing, um, considering the level of talent on the team. South Africa, away from South Africa, have been good. Um, in that same period, that 2008, that I talked about with New Zealand, They've won eight and lost four, drawn five. Um, it's a very good away record. Um, so there's not really a lot of reasons to be optimistic about New Zealand in this series. Um, I think South Africa will win. I think they need to win. As I say, the next series against England, which is a, um, a very pressure-packed series. It seems to be clearly the two most talented teams in the world. One would think the two best teams in the world. I think if they sweep this series, South Africa, they get to be number one officially, whatever that's worth to you. Um, I still think England are the best team in the world, but it is close. Um, but South Africa really need a performance that goes, hey, we're really, really good here. We, you know, we're, we're the best team in the world and we're going to win win test matches. They're against easy opposition. They're in conditions that favour them with their fast bowling strength. Um, their batting, which which had a weakness against spin, or potential weakness, was shown up against Sri Lanka. Should have no demons here. Um, they've got the better team. They should win 3-0. Um, uh, New Zealand's not a team that should be able to eke out draws if the weather permits. Uh, the batting card isn't there. Um... I don't really see any reason to think that New Zealand can win a test match against South Africa. Um, Dale Stein, in particular, I'm looking at Dale Stein, Mornay Morkel, Graham Smith. Those are the three key players for South Africa to make sure that they do that. Um, New Zealand, they'll be looking for more development from Kane Williamson. Um, you know, apart from that, maybe Doug Bracewell having a good series. Some of those younger guys coming through, I should play Trent Bolt. Chris Martin's 38 now, there's no point playing a 38 year old in a team like this. Um, so, possibly phasing him out. I think Franklin should also play. But yeah, so 3-0 South Africa, I don't think it's a too problematic result, despite the travails that we've had with England lo losing 3-0 and Australia drawing a series in South Africa, Australia killing India. It's been a pretty crazy time. Hard to pick these games, and I haven't done very well recently, but this one should be pretty, pretty close to a slam dunk, I think. Anyway, uh, we're back in about a week's time to look at England's Sri Lanka. Uh, probably more consequential, that series, and uh, we'll have a bit more to say about that. Thanks for watching.